Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1507. Hey, we got an interesting question here. Someone asked, hey, if I have cell A3, C3, and F3, how do I count how many of the cells are empty? Now, immediately we would think that we could use the function or some sort of counting function. I see count blank. That sounds exactly like what I'm after, tab. The problem is it expects only a range. If I try to enter multiple cells separated by a comma, it's just not going to work. It's not going to even let me enter that in. All count blank is going to do is allow a range. Enter. So that formula is not going to work. Well, there's another counting function in this list. Notice count a counts the number of cells in the range that are not empty. Well, wait a second. That's sort of the opposite of what we want. But when I hit tab, notice at least it's going to let us enter multiple ranges or cells separated by commas. So I click on A3. I'm going to type a comma to get to value 2. I click on C3, type a comma. For value 3, I'll enter F3. Now, this will do the opposite. So when I Control Enter, that counts how many cells amongst these three cells are empty. And that's not really what we want. We want the opposite. We want the cells that are empty. Well, watch this. Since there's three cells, I'm simply going to take 3 minus whatever count I is. Now, normally, hard coding a number like this into a formula violates Excel's golden rule and is not a good idea. But guess what? This formula is sort of manual. We had to enter three different ranges. And I don't really know how to update this formula, like if I wanted H3 or I7, without coming over here and manually entering a fourth cell reference. So in that sense, I could simply change this to a 4 and the formula would update. Now, there's our correct total. One cell is empty. Now, if you didn't want the 3, you're not going to believe this. This is one of the most obscure functions in Excel, the areas functions. Now, I did a video on this years ago, but have never found a good use for it. And I'm not quite sure if this is a good use. But areas will count if you give it the three cells. It'll say, hey, there's three cells. But the thing is, that reference, that's just going to be a single range. And that's not what we want. Well, there's a number of functions like areas and index that if you want to enter multiple ranges into an argument, you put a parentheses and then enter the cells or the ranges separated by a comma. So comma, boom, comma, boom. I have my three cell references. That entire object is going to be used in reference. So area will just count how many cells three. there are. There it is. There's three of them. Then guess what? F2, I can subtract and use counta. Now, last time we used counta, and even over here, when we entered multiple items, remember we typed a comma. Well, watch this. We don't have to do that. I click on the first one. And to get to the next argument, all I do is hold Control. So watch this. I'm holding Control. Then I'm going to click on C3, F3. And just like that, it automatically puts the commas in close parentheses, and Enter. Now, that's a crazy formula there. I think I like this first one right here. Now, there's another way we could do this. We could actually build individual logical tests and say, hey, are you equal to? And I'm going to use the syntax sometimes used for empty cell, double quote, double quote. Now, when I close parentheses on that, that double quote, double quote is going to work. And it will hunt for that empty cell and get it correctly. But it will also hunt for a zero length text string. When you have double quote, double quote, that is a zero length text string. If we had a formula up here that delivered that to show nothing, this would get a true. Just like right now, if I Control Enter, it's getting a true because it really is empty. Now, if you come up here and equals double quote, double quote, like for example, in if formulas, we often show nothing when we don't want anything to show in the cell. So this is kind of a silly formula here. But when I enter that, notice these formulas, meaning counta. Counta is looking for not empty. And all three cells are not empty because double quote, double quote is a thing. It's a zero length text ring. But that construction 
is going to give you a true if the cell has double quote, double quote, or when I delete, and I can see up in the formula bar, or when it's actually truly empty. Now we can continue this. I'm going to get the next cell reference and ask, are you equal to double quote? The next cell reference, F3, are you equal to double quote, close parentheses, and enter. Now, of course, if I came up here and typed a space, that's a thing, so they all get 0. If I typed a Boolean, of course, that's a thing. Watch what happens here, though. When we do functions, many functions, when you look in help, are programmed to ignore errors. But a direct math operator is not. So if I had equals 1 divided by 0, that's an error. That would mess up our formula here. But these ones are properly working. They're something, something, something. So that means our result should be 0. All right, you're not going to believe this. I'm actually going to copy this down. And by the way, that's a formula. Showing the formula whenever a formula shows up. I'm going to copy both of these cells down. And we're going to do something totally bizarre. I'm going to delete that. And guess what? I'm going to try to use a defined name. So I'm selecting that cell. I'm going to hold Control. This time we're just clicking to select the three desired cells. Then I'm going to come up to the Name box, and I'm going to type a name. Now this defined name will automatically include these three different cell references. Something like My Range and Enter. Whoops. Look at that, I misspelled it. By the way, the drop down will automatically select those three cells now. I want to edit that so I go up to Formulas, Name Manager, or Control F3. Double click to open it, I'm going to change it. Now, the cool thing about this is if we look down here, we can come and edit this later. And look at the syntax that the define name uses for the single name. It has the sheet name, absolute, and a comma. Now I'm going to click OK. And why did we do that? Because equals areas. Now if I put that define name, and you know what? I don't remember what the name is. So I'm going to hit the F3 key, which is paste name. Look at that. I see it there, so I can double click. That's probably a good use for areas. One way that I've seen in the video I made many years ago, almost 10 years ago I think it was, is I had different print ranges. So the sheet printed out with multiple different areas in the spreadsheet. So what areas will do with the defined names is it knows that that name is made up of three distinct parts. F2 minus count a. And this time I remembered the name, so I simply type my. I see the defined name there in the drop down, so I hit tab, close parentheses, and enter. Now we have something that can be updated. Because if I change that my range, I now want to include this h3, and I'm going to delete whatever's there. Click on Name Manager or Control F3. Edit. All right, so you ready? I'm going to come down to this range, comma, and now I'm going to click on H3. So in this way, we have at least one location that will update both parts of our formula, area and counter. Click OK. Click Close. And look at that. Now this one is updating when I change that define name. All right, that was a lot of fun counting different cells that are not next to each other or non-contiguous ranges and counting how many of those cells are empty. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.